Alright, so today we're looking at a character that's literally an eyeball on a body. This is Marvel's Orb, Hasbro Marvel Legends Puff Adder Hilda figure series from the Avengers Wave. You can see through the non window packaging a picture of the figure. Here's the side art, and then here is the other side showing the list of figures you need to. Uh, collect so you can build your build a figure of puff adder and then here is the back side right there Let's get it open. So this is literally as obscure of a character as you're gonna get here. We have Orb so of course this is the first time we've ever gotten orb in Marvel Legends and it might be the only time I don't see us ever getting characters like this or you know once in a and a blue moon release I feel like but it's cool to get these obscure characters it's always cool to get a figure made of a character that's never been made before you could literally collect the entire Marvel Universe at this rate and I think that's cool now right off the back can clearly see that this was the budget hit of the wave you know we got some pretty good heavy hitters we had a brand new mold for Iron Man brand new mold for the Captain America and then here is a heavily reused uh, part figure so this is mainly the bucky cat mold here um of course the head is brand new that's not used before but i think everything else on this figure is is pretty much used before so like i said i think this is definitely the um what i like to call it the budget hit of the wave because in a perfect uh utopian world of marvel legends it would be lovely to get a full complete wave of brand new molds and everything like that but uh you know We've never seen that ever in the history of Legends, and it's not going to start now. So um, there's always that one character, or two characters, or three, one, two, or three, whatever, that get hit with a repaint, or just a remold, or, you know, you're just getting an older figure. And it's mainly happening to the obscure characters that most people don't give a crap about, I guess. You know, the everyday Joe or Jane are, you know, they're not going to know who Orb is, and not really going to care for them. I'm just saying on average. Of course, there's going to be a few select collectors out there that would want a character like this to be made. And even though I have no attachment to this character, I don't know who it is. I don't care for that character, I guess. Unless I read up on it and maybe I'll start to care. I'm still happy to own this figure regardless of it being a reused body mold of Bucky Cap from way back. You know, back in 2012. That's just my take on it. That's just my opinions on it for me. Now, I like the way it looks. I think mainly because of the eyeball, of course, it's it's nicely done. Um, it's very unique and different. Very weird, honestly. Uh, apparently, this character was born this way. It's not like it was a freak show accident with some sort of uh, gamma radiation or something. No, this is how this character was born. With a big eye as his head, which is pretty crazy. Again, going back to the budget hit of the wave, there's only one piece of accessory here. No hands, no heads or nothing. It's just his little ray gun piece right here. So this was one of those um, sneak peek type teasers that the Hasbro team did at one point, I believe. So there it is. And that's it. He does come with the right arm of Puff Adder build a figure. So we got the right arm with the fist. And then we have an alternate uh, open hand there. All right, so here's a closer look at the, I guess, head sculpt. And you can see the painted uh, pupil, iris, the eyeball itself. I like the red veins around it. That's pretty cool. I wish it would go all the way to the back though even though i guess it wouldn't make sense because there's nothing attached to it but where are those veins coming from because there's nothing on the back of it i don't know but anyways it's still you know it's cool to see that there and uh going to the torso the paint job is pretty clean on mine of course there's a few nicks here and there those stars are painted on pretty decently there's the belt got some paint on the belt and on those gloves down to the legs there's the boots of course, here's the knees, they are pinned, and so are the arms right there. Alright, so here is the uh, accessory gun in his hand. Looks like that. I do wish he did have the side hinges for the wrist. I always like holding weapons with the side hinged wrist. But uh, he does not come with it on either arm, or either hand I should say. This collar piece is a separate piece that they added on to give him that collar, which is pretty cool. It does write up sometimes though. And if it rides up, you can kind of see that weird gap there. You gotta make sure you just it's down and then you're good. All right, so for the articulation, the head is on it. Well, there goes the collar too. But the head is on a ball jointed hinge, just as every figure in this wave has been so far. So you can see that right there. There's the head right there. There's the inside of it. And we'll go pop that back in. 
Head is going to move up well, until it pops off, but it moves up about that far before it wants to come out. And then he moves down. Well, there you go again. So at a certain point, it does pop off, but about that far down, which isn't too much, but at least it's something. And then as for the left and right, left and right, and not really any head tilting, not like you need it on this big old eyeball, but arms are going to go all the way around. We all know this body <laughs> from head to toe. Really no point in going through this, but we'll go through it anyways, in and out, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. Uh, of course, that glove will hinder that bend and limit it to only a 90 degree bend. There's a wrist swivel and a regular hinge. Ab crunch at the torso, no clicky, which is nice, and that blue paint does go all the way up. Going down, that blue paint does go all the way through too, but then at a certain point, you see how that gap is. It does cut off. Uh, but you see how deep that ab crunch is. I guess this is what everybody expected on Iron Man, but there's that cut. Waist swivel, T-jointed legs will kick all the way forward, back down, in and out, pretty good. Thigh swivels, double jointed knees, boot cut, shin swivel, ankle hinge at the uh, foot, of course, ankle, foot, whatever, and then the ankle rocker right there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and compare them next to some of the other figures in this wave. We'll start off with Ultimate Captain America here, and you can see that Cap does stand taller, slightly taller than Orb. Here he is next to Baron Von Strucker, which stands slightly shorter than Orb. And then standing the tallest, we have Extremis Iron Man. Alright, so that'll wrap things up on this review of Marvel's Orb from the Marvel Legends Puff Adder Avengers Build-A-Figure Wave. Uh, pretty cool, like I said, budget figure of the wave and not as well known as others. So this might be an easy pass for you or maybe you really want this obscure character like I do. I, I mean, like I said, I don't have any attachment. I don't really care for this character. I don't know who this character is, but still pretty damn cool that we're getting this character and it exposes me to these characters that I don't know so that way I could you know look them up and learn more about them so it's pretty cool that Hasbro still goes out their way to to at least get the character out there even if it's on a older body mold you know I'm okay with that so let me know your thoughts on this figure down below in the comment section and while you're down there hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already as always everyone be well be kind be positive as much as you can and i'll catch you on the next one bye